Uh, welcome to the Building Zoning and Economic Development Committee um, meeting on Wednesday, March 27th. Um, time is 4.01. Um, to start with our meeting, um, Clerk, could you do a roll call, please? Chairperson Patty Smith. Here. Vice Chair Shweta Bade. Alderman Carl Franco. Here. Alderman Mike Seville. Here. Alderman Bill Donnell. Three present. Thank you. Our first um, item on business is approval of the minutes. It's item number 24-0191, approval of the minutes for the Building, Zoning, and Economic Development Committee held on March 13th, 2024, motioned by Alderman Franco, second, second by second. Alderman Seville. All in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Clerk, do we have any public comment today? We have no one signed up today. Thank you so much. First item on the agenda is item number 24-0108, a resolution authorizing the execution of a railway agreement for access and roadway improvements on Sullivan Road between Highland Ave and Illinois Route 31 Lake Street in Kane County, Aurora 60506. Hello there. Hey, good afternoon. Ken Schroth with the Public Works Department. I'm going to be pinch hitting here today for uh, Suits the Vong, who's not in the office today. The memo that you see before you, along with the roadway agreement, was worked on by Suits and Tracy Vasek, and the developer who uh, is in the process of building the two buildings in North Aurora is here today, too, in case we have any questions. But first, as we just, uh, Suits put this quick PowerPoint together. I'll just blast through it real quick, kind of give you some background on it. So let's see if the pointer works here. Can you guys see? Oh, no, you see the cursor, but not the pointer. There we go. All right, thank you. Uh, so to get your bearings, uh, north is up here. Uh, I-88 is right here. You can see the I-88 ramps onto Lake Street, and then you come down to Sullivan Road. And the magenta line is basically the boundary of Aurora with North Aurora. And the importance of that is that everything north of this line is North Aurora. But if you uh, recall back in 2002, Alderman Seville, you were around, um, uh, we had a boundary agreement with North Aurora where basically we divvied up all of the roadways that we, sh that we share between the boundaries and divided up, you know, who was going to be responsible for what. In that boundary agreement, it says the city of Aurora will have jurisdiction of Sullivan Road right here and will be responsible for the ultimate build out of Sullivan Road. And so um, we were approached by North Aurora, who last year approved this development. You can see highlighted in red. It's basically two speculative warehouses with both dual access onto Smoke Tree Plaza up here, as well as Fairview Drive down here. And what a lot of people don't realize is that this little sliver of property that the developer purchased is actually part of this development, which was dedicated right away. It's an actual roadway. And so the developer worked with this adjoining property owner here in North Aurora, the, the dental center, and purchased additional property to make this a proper roadway entrance for uh, truck traffic. But what's really unique about this project is um, the, the need for this connection becomes apparent when you realize the trucks coming down Lake Street here, they have two ways to enter this facility. One would be coming all the way down to Sullivan and the other would be turning here at smoke tree but as you know it's basically a 180 degree u-turn for these trucks to try and make this and, uh, and traverse this is that a stoplight there there point? is and north aurora has done the best they can to improve the geometry of that intersection but it's still you're, you're taking an 18 wheeler trying to turn it around so we weren't too keen about the trucks coming down Sullivan Road, but with this access point, it actually prevents those same trucks from having to traverse our roundabout and come up this way, like many of the dart trucks and other trucks that go to this uh, industrial area. So having this entrance actually saves our roundabout from from the uh, pounding of these trucks. And so we worked with the uh, developer, and they've been very amenable to... Uh, Making sure that we make improvements to Sullivan that are only that that are not only good for the interim, but also allows the city to start working towards improvements in the future. Ken, can you go back and show me where that roundabout is? 
It is right there. Okay, thank you. And so the way we looked at it is there's two, two basic projects that, that uh, have to be accomplished. One is the immediate improvements that would be part of what the developer commits to building at this time that would facilitate their entrance, get trucks off of the roadway as quickly as possible as they approach that entrance. But then also, this is an arterial street uh, and it, it's a truck route. And so we know that the city of Aurora, per the boundary agreement, that we're responsible for making improvements to this intersection in the, in the future. So what we're looking at is committing to making those improvements as a city project and working with IDOT, because as you know, it would be years in the making to get this other uh, project uh, moving in the purple uh, area there. So to zoom in on what the developer is committed to, um, their traffic study, their traffic engineer showed that because trucks approaching this roundabout um, wouldn't be much slower than the vehicles that are trying to slow down to yield in the roundabout, they basically showed us that we don't need to provide turn lanes, but they are actually providing not only a right turn lane, but they are also providing left turn bays. I don't anticipate many trucks at all ever coming from this direction to turn in. But they are committed to building this left turn bay here as well as this right turn bay. And then also part of their project, um, they're committed to uh, doing some lane marking improvements down near Sullivan and Lake. Basically, without adding additional pavement, we'll be able to add additional stacking of the left turn bay just simply by re remarking the pavement that can be accomplished when they come out there and do all of this work. And so the future improvement that the city of Aurora would work towards is basically adding a, an additional left turn bay to Sullivan Road to help those a, extra turn uh, truck turning movements. And as you know, in, in order to put a left turn bay on one side, you have to mirror it over here. So this actually involves work on both sides <laughs> of uh, Lake Street on Sullivan. And and is uh, we've been very successful in the past in going after STP funds, surface transportation funds, CMAC funds, congestion mitigation and air quality grant funds um, to do these types of improvements. And we typically go after these federal funds until we have a 10, 20, 10 to twenty percent local cost share with the feds. So that's something that we would work towards. And so the numbers that are before you. Um, are derived in this manner. Um, basically, all of the improvements I just discussed with you, the yellow improvements that will be built by the developer this year, the pink improvement that will be built along with the intersection improvements, basically just filling in the gap of what of curb that needs to be built, and then the intersection improvements. That all comes to a total of about $2.3 million. And you can see the, the cost here that suits put in here for each of these different segments. And so we looked at the traffic generated by this facility and they're only gonna account for about 40% of the trucks on this truck route that already exists in the city of Aurora. And so 40% of 2.3 million is roughly the $900,000 that, uh, $928,000 that's uh, in the agreement but they are already committed to building $800,000 this year. So basically $928,000, 40% of the total, minus what they're gonna build this year, ends up with uh, um, the remainder being roughly $117,000, which is outlined in the agreement. So what they would do per this agreement this year, build all those improvements in yellow, stripe that additional lane on, on Sullivan near Lake Street, give the city a, uh, a fee in lieu for $117,000. We in turn will add that to our capital plan. We'll take that $117,000, we'll, we'll start the phase one engineering, which will help us score better in those other grants that I previously mentioned. And then we'll start going after uh, those applications in the various grant cycles as they come available. And then we'll start programming the city match for the intersection. Is there a time frame for that? Yeah, that's my question. Go ahead. I would, I, oh. Is there a time frame for that, Ken? Uh, I would predict that we would be before you with a phase one engineering agreement probably sometime late summer, and the phase one engineering would be done late 24 in hopes that we have that ready to uh, start the application process next spring of 25. And what is your 
confidence in receiving the requested funding? It really depends on what the region submits at each application. Um, we're pretty successful. Uh, we usually do 10 to $12 million a year in federal grants through the city's transportation program. So we just have to prioritize this over some other locations and then also hope that the phase one shows us scoring additional points um, in that evaluation process with all the other ones submitted in the, co in the county. And as part of the improvements that the developer is doing and the city will be doing, uh, is anybody going to be upgrading the base of the roadway to handle the increased heavy weight of the trucks? They, they will be uh, milling and overlaying um, that whole segment in, in yellow. And as we typically require, we, we, we mill off less than we actually put back. So when we do that, we actually increase the structural number of the roadway. But what about the actual base, the gravel base underneath to handle the weight. Is that going to be changed? You are. Full you are doing a full. Yeah, full down, okay. Full Good. Yeah. And then what Thank about you. our improvements? Are we doing the same thing down towards Lake Stream? Ultimately, that would be part of what we would request with the federal's, uh, federal application. Okay. And does the developer have to install any uh, needed uh, curbing or sidewalk or anything like that? Uh, let me go back to... Yep. Froze on me here. They are making. You can see the uh, uh, the sidewalk connection that they're making here, and that they are also, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jess. That uh, just modifying the exist. There is some existing sidewalk on the south side that we're going to modify correct. and align. If if we're going to include the petitioner, we need him to come up and identify. Oh, us. I'm sorry. Please. If you could Thank state you. your name for the record. <laughs> Hi, uh, Jess Kanigi. I represent the uh, the development firm. I'm with Phelan Development. Um, yes, we are. We will be adding uh, some, or we will be modifying the sidewalk on the south. We'll be adding some sidewalk across uh, the north uh, drive entrance into our site, and then we will be doing a, a full depth replacement to city standards <laughs> for the roadway. And we've gone through a pretty exhaustive review with uh, with Suits and, and the team. Um, so we, and it, it, this also is in keeping with the IGA documents for the for the corridor as well and when do you anticipate your um, improvements to be complete so you can be truck, uh, driving truck traffic through um, so pending pending approval obviously um, we are looking to start this in the spring um, and complete it within call it 120 days it's not a huge amount of improvement um, but it's yeah we, spring. We, we this spring yes. it is spring <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the asphalt plants open mid mid April, so we need the, obviously them to open in order for us to execute the work. Obviously, we need your approvals, um, but yeah, we're anticipating doing it this year. Um, so we'll have nice nice new roadway out there here shortly, Very hopefully. Good. And do you anticipate uh, a need for truck traffic in the meantime, and where will they be going? Uh, I guess the nice thing about our the way we design the park is we have the ability to to utilize smoke tree to the north. Um, the buildings are currently under construction. Um, we've signed one lease in the, um, in the western building for just about 60% of that building to a medical supply group. Um, they'll be taking occupancy July 1st. And if for some reason this, the, the roadway is still going on, uh, we have the ability to route them to the north off of Smoke Tree. Um, they can head west on Sullivan via Evergreen, and then if they need to get out to, uh, to Route 31, they can use Smoke Tree to the Lovedale intersection at 31, that lit intersection. And DART, they, they do maneuver the full-size WB65 trucks through that intersection. Is it the most efficient? No, but it is. It is th they can do it, yeah. We've seen yeah, plenty. My, my concern would just be routing the, the truck traffic over the roundabout. In the uh, we're going to try and avoid that, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't perceive us needing to send them through the roundabout. Okay. There's a fair amount of WB65 that goes through it today. We're, we're going our design is trying to have them avoid utilizing that. Yeah. So that it's majority of traffic, uh, when they, when they egress the site, will not go through that. And if they do need to get to it, they can theoretically go to Smoke Tree to Evergreen and avoid it at, uh, anyway. Okay. Final question: the, the uh, improvements in the middle of the street. It's, it's going to be an uplifted uh, median or is it just striping? I couldn't understand what that was going to be. 
Yeah, it would, ju it would just be lane markings. Yeah, okay. so we have we have a th it's a th and per the I per the IGA, this is almost identical to what was contemplated in that I think it was a 2003 agreement with North Aurora. We're constructing it to the to pretty much that design criteria. Um, so it will be a divided uh, three lane road with that center turn lane, and then that can be continued on that second phase of project Great. as well. Okay, thank you. If, if needed, because if needed. We don't anticipate a lot of turn movements on the on the eastern part of the of the project. Um, so my guess is that we're going to be able to do this design to where after the these truck turn lanes um, neck back down to one lane in each direction, we'll be able to keep it one lane in each direction until we start widening again when we get closer to Lake Street. Okay. Alderman Franco. <clears throat> All right. So how many truck bays are going to be in this development? Um, we have, I'll have to look that up real quick. And where are they going to be? Yeah, I think I, we'll double check this, but off the top of our heads, we think there's 52. All right. Who, who gets the taxes? This is a rhetorical question. Who gets the taxes from the, the money that you make over there, North Aurora or Aurora? It's, it's property annexed in the city of, Aurora, of North Aurora and permitted through North Aurora. So, it would right, be North so Aurora. they're going to receive the money for that, whatever you generate. We're going to make improvements on a road that we're designed to take, make improvements on. And we're going to spend a portion of the money from the city to do that. And North Aurora is going to get the benefit of the taxes and we're going to do the work for them. You see where I'm going with this. That doesn't seem quite right. I, I think I need somebody to chime in because why is not North Aurora pitching in? Because they're going to get the tax revenue for 52 bays, which could be a lot of trucks. So I'm just kind of want to get all that my yes, head wrapped around all that. Using Aurora Roads. Using Aurora yeah. Road, we're paying for it with federal money. They're going to reap the benefits of the taxes. Where is their input in this? What are, yeah. are they going to give us for this? Because it seems like they should be part of this thing, too, if there's money being involved. Yeah, and this, so this, uh, this is a good question, Alderman. This goes way back decades with the boundary agreement. So basically it was agreed that the city of Aurora would make improvements to Sullivan Road, and they in turn would make improvements. I believe it was Mitchell Road that they finished the improvements on. So um, it's kind of the it's our turn now and so basically we knew that one day we would have to make these improvements to Sullivan Road but we're fortunate that we do have a developer with us now that is willing to make those partial improvements and then also pay for uh, uh, the a component of the future improvements so we have a quid pro quo with them and they've done something that we could have maybe done, but they did it. So we're doing something that maybe they could have done, but we're doing it. Is that bad? I mean, I just want to make sure this is fair and equitable because I don't want Aurora to get stuck with a tab for doing improvements that we wouldn't have to do if that facility wasn't there. I mean, there's certain types of improvements, maybe not all of them. So if we're doing something that benefits, something that's going to generate taxes for North Aurora, you see where I'm going then. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe normal improvements we do, but this is a little bit different. So I'm just kind of, I, I just... I'm trying to figure out why that seems doesn't seem right in my mind. But if you're going to, and Alex, I know you'll, you'll speak to that, yeah. just about the quid pro quo thing, though. And I want to piggyback on that before you, an, an, you answer, Alex, because one thing you did say, um, Ken, is that you are prioritizing this project over others. So when, when we add to what Alderman Franco said, and we're talking about prioritizing, um, what are we prioritizing over to do work for North Aurora? Okay. Did, did you want to go first, Alex? If I can just say, every once in a while, we in the present have to deal with decisions and agreements that were committed to in the past. And so we asked the same questions very early on when Ken brought this through to the administration. And I believe in your packet there's some history of this, correct? Some explanation. Agreement. The agreement. So the agreement was that at the time the the administration and the council then agreed to this, knowing in the future that there was a absolute obligation for the city to follow through with it. Now that deal did include some work on another road that they did do. I think Mitchell, Mitchell. Road, right? Mm -hmm. And so for years this property sat undeveloped. Now, North Aurora came to us and said, it's time, you got a legit developer, staff has done their best, 
with their concurrence and their participation to make the best out of this deal. You are None of you are wrong about how this is winding up, but as long as I've been here and been with Mayor Irvin's administration and knowing all of you, we have never not held up our end of a bargain, even if it was from 20 plus years ago. So like I said, every once in a while, so now we're trying to make lemonade out of the lemons. We are going to get improvements on Sullivan Road. I think, Ken, you had told me we had always planned on doing some of these things. It's just now it's coming to fruition with here. So this is nothing North Aurora's done wrong or the city of Aurora, either staff or, or administration. We're both enforcing a deal committed too long ago. So I'm, I'm going to ask just sure. one second. So with that, um, what they did on Mitchell Road, and not to be tit for tat, are we doing the same dollar sign type project? Are we? We are. You know, we are. Because the same. We are. We are adhering to the letter of the agreement. So whatever it says in the agreements, or the agreement, that's what we're putting in. I don't think there's dollar signs in the agreement. There's not. No, it's just being responsible. Which party would be responsible for the ultimate build out? So we are fortunate here, like I said, that I think we'll be able to neck down our improvements here in this segment here where we're not going to need a three lane section. Um, so we're fortunate with that. And then the other thing I'd like to point out, too, is that, is, as you know, you see through BZ&E all the time when a developer comes in, they're responsible for building out their frontage. Well, if you look at their frontage, their frontage is right here, and that's it. And, and like I said, I feel uh, very fortunate the developer is willing to put in this left turn bay and this right turn bay in exchange for um, our, our, our right-of-way permit to do this work. But they're going to do all these improvements shown in, in yellow instead of just this area, even though it forces them to do work in front of other properties that were developed previously. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah. And so I just wanted to reiterate what I learned in talking with you about this project this summer. Evergreen did exist, or not, I'm sorry, Fairview did exist, but it was a gravel road, or a dirt gravel road at the time, um, which they had certain uh, rights uh, for access. However, the city of Aurora could have said no, but they can still access Evergreen, which meant they'd be able to access Evergreen and go down Sullivan Road, either to the west or the east, with no participation. No Correct. improvements Correct. and tearing up our traffic circle. Correct. So this was thought at the time that this would be an acceptable compromise to allow access on on Fairview and get these public improvements to help assist with our our street that we were responsible for 100%. Well stated. Is that correct? Well stated, yes. Okay. And then on top of that, they're working with North Aurora to vacate Fairview right away so that it will not be the responsibility of either jurisdiction anymore. Um, that way that it'll be a private drive maintained by them in perpetuity with their access drive onto Sullivan. Okay. And then can, can you um, have elaborate a little bit in, on your um, statement of prioritizing this project over others? Mm -hmm. Um, so we, every year, uh, we work with the mayor's office to come up with our capital list um, and go after grants, not only through KKCOM, the Kane Kendall Council of Mayors, but also through our lobbyists in the mayor's office. And so we've always got a, a short list of projects that we've, we, we want to move down those avenues, but we typically have to start the process with phase one engineering. And so that's what I mean by prioritizing. We, we've known for decades that ultimately the city of Aurora is responsible for building out Sullivan Road. This is going to be kind of the impetus to push us forward and get that next step going, prioritize it to get to phase one so that we could start getting in line for the funding. So we're not pushing any city projects, city of Aurora projects out of the way to get this done. Okay, that's what, what I want a clarification on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I just want to emphasize, for better or for worse, this is now a city of Aurora project that we have to take on. We're doing it. And uh, we've, we're asking staff for COW, they will add the intergovernmental agreement to the packet because it's not presently before you. It's just the, yes. uh, that. So I think that will help. And perhaps if somebody could annotate that to highlight what Ken and I have talked about, mm -hmm. That would be great. And then we'll attach it so the full council has it. Any okay. further questions? I got some comments. So I, I would also put in there because when you explained this about the quid pro quo with Mitchell Road, that makes it a little bit more palatable, obviously. Um, I think going forward, though, because this seems to me, and I we got to live by our agreements. I get that. 
But it seems when that agreement was made, that should have been on normal stuff. Had they put something in there that was commercial with no trucks, we wouldn't be doing the extra. You know, we'd be doing that, so we'd just be doing normal improvements. So that's on us. Um, but I think going forward, when we do these things, we should put in there for normal type of things. If you're going to put some kind of facility that's like outrageously needs improvement because of something different, you know, I, I think that would have been appropriate here, but that's water under the bridge. But I want to get back to those 52 bays. That's a lot of potential trucks. So are we going to have a problem with those trucks coming out and going on to Sullivan? I mean, how are they going to get on there if there's a lot of trucks? I mean, it, what are we looking at for that? Well, I would I would predict that a lot of the outgoing trucks will probably take smoke tree because that, that turn movement here um, for a outbound truck is not a big deal that's easily traversed. And you're right, Alderman, I think they've got plenty of stacking space on their property for trucks to line up, but because of the continuous operation effect of our roundabout, those trucks might not find too many opportunities to get out. And it won't take long before those truckers realize it's better to go north. Could we also put, because we've I've dealt with this on the west side a number of times, no right turns when they come out of there, only left turns go back to 31. We don't want them going. We don't want them even thinking about going west around the roundabout. You've got to make a left turn only. Trucks. I mean, you know, we, we have to push the traffic in a certain direction via signage. That's what we want. And even with signage, sometimes they don't adhere to it, but at least we have a better chance when they come out. So they're not turning right unless they have some business there, you know, 100 yards to the west. I would like them, I would think just turning left on the, if they're coming out that way, would always be the way to go. Yeah, let, let me take a look at sure. that before COW, because at some point Sullivan drops the truck route designation, and I got to look on the map to see where right. we currently designate that. It's a truck route up to Evergreen, so I don't know if we want to restrict it until, until it, that designation drops. Well, and I just want to throw one more thing out there. We've seen before where people that, people that are residents in Aurora that are west of there, should not have a negative effect for businesses that are in another town if we can help it. So that's why if we're going to go east, it makes sense. We go west, now there's truck traffic there. I don't think that would be good for the neighbors, especially since it's something that we're not even getting a benefit from going, you know, because of the thing. So I, I would hope we can kind of take a look at that, like you said. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to back up what he said because I for them to be going in that direction and to interfere with the current residents if we couldn't if there was a way to get around with that i think we should take a look at it yeah i'll take a look to see where that designation drops off i mean they'd just be stuck in a circular pattern if if the designation stops here then then they wouldn't be able to continue anyway and they just right. end up right back in the same facility they just left so sure. um yeah, I mean, we take a look. I mean, we're trying to we're trying to make it as palatable for everybody. Yep. But I have a little bit more of an angst when it's like we're not even getting a benefit out of this facility. We're not getting tax revenue, so it's even more of a like, all right, let's you know put the kibosh on whatever we can to help our neighbors. Yeah. We got to hold up to our agreement, but I don't feel yep. like we're doing apples to apples here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't blame the messengers here. We're just trying. That's all right. Not blaming anybody. You know, we're all just talking. And, 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 and if I can say, if you go there right now, this time, it's heavy traffic already there yeah. on Sullivan, and so most of the traffic I'm going to gather are people going back to their residences. You know, people who live, you know, west of there. There really is no, and you guys might be able to say this too. I mean, the only reason a truck, I, I don't see a reason for a truck to turn right out of there because they're going to go left, if anything, but it's going to take them a while because of so much traffic. So there's really, I don't think, going to be the, the truck traffic there when they can get out on Smoke Tree and take one left with a light mm -hmm. and then get on the expressway. I mean, I. so good luck. You can't even, like, like when you're coming from Mercy, to from you know to hit that and go left or right there's a lot of cars there you know maybe middle of the day there's not but right now you know mid-afternoon it gets a lot of traffic there sure. and, and part of the reason i brought that up because i know we got this problem at deer path that these trucks come out of um of that area where the business property is and they'll once in a while go right and they'll go by verona ridge and i get calls all the time right. uh why we don't know but with signage, at least it's, it helps them to say, all right, we don't want you to go this way because you never know when that stray truck is going to go somewhere because they just didn't know. So that's all. Mm -hmm. I've, just, I've experienced it. That's why I bring that up. 
Thank Any you. further questions? Hmm. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Seville, second um, by Alderman Franco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. All right, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we have no closed session. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned at 7 or 7, 431. Oh,